At the beginning of this chapter, I presented two postulates of ideal gases and stated that these postulates are not completely true. Real molecules have a finite volume and have attractive intermolecular forces. Consider a gas. The gas molecules take up a small amount of the available space. As the gas is compressed to higher pressures, the gas molecules are closer together and the assumption that they occupy zero volume is increasingly in error. That is, the zero volume postulate fails at high pressure. Gases are a gas because they have sufficiently weak intermolecular forces. In gases, there is sufficient thermal energy to break the intermolecular bonds. When the available thermal energy decreases, the intermolecular bonds do not break and the gas condenses to a liquid. That is, the zero intermolecular forces postulate fails at low temperatures. One measure of the extent of non-ideal behavior is the compressibility. The compressibility, with symbol Z, is given by the equation shown here. Considering the ideal gas law, I would like you to calculate the compressibility of an ideal gas. You should have determined that the compressibility of an ideal gas is 1. These are the compressibilities of some common gases at 298 Kelvin. Looking at the inset, it is evident that as the pressure decreases, these gases behave more and more like an ideal gas. That is, the compressibility converges to 1 under ambient, under ambient conditions, 1 bar pressure and 25 degrees Celsius. With increasing pressure, there is an initial decrease and then a subsequent rise in compressibility. We will learn more about these deviations shortly, but the initial drop is due to the attractive intermolecular forces and the subsequent rise is due to the finite volume of gas molecules. This figure looks at the effect of temperature on the compressibility. This figure is for nitrogen gas at varying temperatures. We know that nitrogen condenses to a liquid at minus 196 degrees Celsius, or 77 Kelvin. So at this temperature, the intermolecular forces are stronger than the thermal energy. It is evident that the deviations from ideal gas behavior increase as the temperature decreases. From another perspective, the intermolecular forces component, the initial drop, affects the compressibility less as the temperature increases and becomes further from the boiling point. There are many equations that better approximate the properties of real gases, but there is no exact equation. We are going to look at the van der Waals equation, a simple but reasonably accurate correction. The van der Waals equation directly corrects for the two assumptions. To correct for the finite volume, we assume that each mole of gas occupies a volume B. B is dependent on the gas. Thus, as shown in the equation, the actual volume is less than the stated volume of the container. The intermolecular forces correction is not direct. We assume that there is an attractive intermolecular force between gaseous entities, given the symbol A. Again, A depends on the gas. Because of the attractive intermolecular force, the molecules hit the wall with less force. 
which is observed is a reduction in the pressure. The observed pressure will always be less than the ideal pressure because of the attractive intermolecular forces. We can measure the container volume and we can measure the observed pressure. Substituting these into the ideal gas equation gives us the van der Waals equation. Here are the A and B coefficients for some common gases. They are only valid at 298 Kelvin. The van der Waals coefficients are temperature dependent. Looking at B, the smallest B is for neon. The largest B is for chlorine. B is the volume occupied by one mole of gas, and the values follow the expected trend related to the size of the atoms and molecules presented here. Looking at A, helium has the smallest A, and chlorine has the largest. Helium does not readily interact with other molecules. Chlorine has many polarizable valence electrons. Ammonia and water are both polar and have large A coefficients. We've already did the first this example while looking at the previous slide. In order to understand how A and B affect the pressure, it is easiest to look at the rearranged equation on the right. Pause the video now and determine how A and B affect the pressure. You should have determined that A causes the pressure to go down and B causes the pressure to go up by increasing the denominator. This is the slide that was shown previously. Looking at this slide, A is responsible for the initial decrease in compressibility. The greater the intermolecular forces, the greater the negative deviation in the compressibility. B is responsible for the subsequent rise in compressibility. The greater the gas molecule size, the greater the change in compressibility. In class, we will be looking at numerous examples of this.